Good morning, everyone. Good morning, esteemed panel members. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is Lorraine Bourne. I am the uh, program chair of the Bachelor of Science in Psychology in DCU. And it is my pleasure this morning to present on our staff identity and learning uh, plan. And I will present on behalf of our team uh, with um, our colleague, uh, Dr. Mark Lynn, uh, Director of Teaching and Learning Enhancement at DCU. So what is DSTEP? Undergraduate psychology training, so pre-professional training, the four-year cycle degree in DCU began in 2010. Um, and as part of our professional um, uh, accreditation by the Psychological Society of Ireland, uh, we've identified a core pillar within our training, research literacy, the capstone of our undergraduate training. So we are currently accredited by our uh, Psychological Society of Ireland um, partners and in 2018 we will um, continue through the process of re-accreditation. So through our annual programmatic reviews and right now going through our um, actual, our first programmatic review, we've identi identified key areas for our staff, our psychology unit, in identifying where we're positioned and our future, our sustainable learning goals. So the why, D-step, what is it about? So we've identified in order to address, based on evidence, um, enhancement, motivation, adaptive learning, we've identified serious gamified principles as core to curriculum redesign and assessment in our undergraduate program. And we've identified as our staff unit key areas in terms of enhancing digital capacity and our ability to um, undergo curriculum redesign and assessment in a peer-supported environment as key as core areas in our staff development, our learning plan. So who is our team? Um, in terms of identifying our staff learning, we have um, looked at key pillars. So under curriculum redesign, um, myself and our Chair of Psychology, Professor Teresa Burke, will be internal leads on the team. In terms of peer-supported learning, so working very closely with our volunteer students and our psychology students within the unit, Dr. Sinead Smith, expert in behaviour analysis, will lead out in this. In terms of content, digital content development, so the evidence base of our staff learning and also the products of our learning activities, Mr. Project Boylan, senior um, IT consultant, um, psychology discipline specific within our unit, will lead out with our partners. And in terms of assessment, um, Dr. Kay Monsell, so senior lecturer in the Institute of Education, a centre of excellence, in um, research and teaching and education in DCU will lead out on that pillar, as supported by our Director of Teaching and Learning. So our core team um, is made up of internal leads in identifying our um, identity as psychology staff, positioned uniquely in the School of Nursing and Human Sciences in the Faculty of Science and Health in DCU. So we have strong internal as well as external collaborative links and we've identified a set of advisors to advise on our staff identification and learning plans. So at an international level, um, Arizona State University is our partner and Director of Teaching and Learning Enhancement will um, form part of the advisory group on assessment, curriculum redesign and digital um, content development. In terms of our UK um, collaborative partners in the University of Sussex, again, Director of Teaching and Learning, uh, we, they will work closely with our leads in terms of staff development. And of course, our national partners in terms of advising on peer-supported learning in GMIT and also in Maynooth University. Our partners in Waterford Institute of Technology will advise on gamification. So our independent reviewers are separate at um, international level, our Arizona State, so head of psychology unit there, and national, um, our external examiner to the programme, will independently review the different phases of our staff development plan. So what is our plan? We will address this plan at two time points. Uh, I will address it and Mark will address it later when we look at how our, um, our um, project 
um, demonstrates impacts along the cycle. So we have broken down our plan, so our two-year plan, um, in four phases, and that's based on the evidence-based reflective uh, cycle under the CPD framework. So our first phase is conducting a learning needs analysis for our psychology unit. So within the School of Human uh, so, um, Nursing and Human Sciences, and also with our internal uh, partners in the Business School, the Institute of Education and Schools of uh, Human Performance. So part of that is identifying our staff needs analysis, working through development of the learning plan, evidencing that learning plan, and then reflecting on our future learning goals or our sustainability goals. So I will now hand over to Mark, who will uh, talk through this plan um, in more detail and how we uh, meet the impact factors. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> okay, unfortunately, I don't have one for everyone in the audience, but we do have one for, for the panel uh, to talk through the plan, but I will make a soft copy available if anybody is interested. So uh, what were we asked to do for criteria two? We were asked to align how we align with the framework, how we have uh, clarity and coherence, and indeed uh, our student perspective and our institutional strategies. So um, <clears throat> the, the, that will cover the next set or the next section of the presentations. The aims of the frameworks, and I, I will just read these out, the aims of the framework to empower staff to create, discover and engage in meaningful professional development. Our plan does that to encourage staff and peer dialogue. Our plan does that. Our, our structure of our teaching groups, our, our um, self-reflections, to allow them to assist and reflect and plan and contribute to their discipline. Our plan has factors for all of that. And of course, and probably most importantly, particularly from uh, Kat's point of view, as she mentioned there, to contribute to the student learning experience. Our plan factors in that because it very much involves the students. Looking across the various different domains, and we'll break these down now in a second, um, <coughs> the, the top three are, are, are catered for in the teaching groups that we'll establish. Right? The uh, staff portfolios uh, also capture in uh, one, two, and indeed uh, three, we're going to be doing some peer dialogue. Our professional skills come in for our, our international advisory panel, our national and international advisory panel, where we're bringing in both discipline experts and also teaching and learning experts to assist us, assist our own development. And of course, we're learning from one another as well. It is a two-way conversation. Um, <coughs> To show further alignment, what we decided to do was actually take, and this is just one example, and I do appreciate it's a bit small to see at the back, but this is the domain, uh, the third domain, uh, professional communication and dialogue. And we took each of the different major elements of our plan, so our teaching groups, our curriculum redesign, our assessment and feedback, and our, our peer-assisted learning staff portfolios, developing content, and indeed our dissemination and uh, evaluation. And we mapped our touch points to the framework uh, based on those activities. Now that's just one of them, and I do appreciate that, that it's difficult to see, but we took each one of them, there was over 30 different elements, as, as uh, the people in the form will know, and we said, right, well, we have 10 direct touch points for, uh, from our project evaluation, or 16 from our curriculum design. Sort of stuff. So we are <coughs> tightly linked to the framework. If we're looking at our um, <coughs> strategic clarity and, and coherence, so looking at the plan itself, you will be able to see, and I address this to the panel, but you will be able to see that we have integrated evaluation throughout the project. And that's important. We didn't want to learn at the very end. It's a two-year project. We didn't want to learn at the very end. We wanted to learn as we were going along. And you will see that there's key touch points and what we have down as impacts and deliverables. Um, there's key touch points with students and with staff. So we're making sure that students are involved from the onset and staff are learning from one another as we go along. And the whole idea is that this project, the outputs from this, we're developing staff through this, that it goes beyond the lifetime of the project, that it makes it in a sustainable way. When we're training up with the help of Patrick and indeed other colleagues, training them up on how to create a staff content, online content, or flipping the classroom, that doesn't just limit itself to these modules and these core pillar modules that we're talking about. They take that knowledge and implement it in the rest of the programs. When they build relationships with Sussex and Arizona State University and Galway Mayo, that goes beyond the lifetime of this project. 
we used existing data, as um, Lorraine alluded to at the start, our, our programmatic reviews, also ISI and our student survey of teaching, to identify this as an area that we need to concentrate on. So we don't offer supply-led uh, training from the Teaching Enhancement Unit. We offer demand-led training. And this was demanded based on the data that we have. Building on the expertise that we have, the, the um, peer-assisted learning, the, the curriculum design, building on that, recognising our gaps, and, and hopefully using the forum uh, to facilitate our development as we go along. I'd like to spend a bit of time on student, um, <coughs> student perspective because the student voice is critical for us. Um, having the student input into it is, is so important and that's why we started with our surveys of teaching. That's why we started with the ISIs and, and so on, was to get them involved from the very start. And if I broke it down into before, during and after, well very much the student voice is there from the onset, from, from these forums, from these feedback, from the review panels that we've created. Student participation, and I, I, I point directly to uh, Sinead's contribution, which is in the peer-assisted learning. We are involving the students in their learning, and research tells us involving the students in it, making it participatory, increases engagement, increases the, the uh, in our case, what we hope is the, our retention and, and uh, the success rates within our courses. <coughs> so we involved them straight from the get-go, and you will see in the plan that we have evaluations and test beds and pilots, even during the summer, we'll be uh, piling it out the content with our students, just to, to, to test it out before we release it to the rest of the students. And by building in all of those touch points, by involving the students from the onset and training us, developing <coughs> us on how to change our curriculum to do that, um, we will actually be building the graduate attributes, our softer skills, the communication skills, the leadership skills. And this then will work as a template for us when we are developing other programs, training other staff. These will be the shining light of DCU as far as I'm concerned, if we can get this, this project up and running. And overall, everything we do will be actually developing not just the digital capacity of the students, because when we implement gamification into it, when we implement a more blended learning into it, because of all the, the training the staff are going to undergo, the students are going to be engaged in improving their li digital literacy skills, but also so are the staff. And again, I go back to the point, they're going to bring this beyond the lifetime of this project. Very quickly, talking about the um, strategic alignment. Well, uh, both our, our uh, university plan and our teaching and learning plan highlights five different elements, five different elements directly relevant to this project. Professional development of our staff. It is something we have set in stone we are going to do, and this project lives up to that. <coughs> Student-centered approaches, the same again. Innovation and teaching. Two minutes. Two minutes, great stuff. Innovation and teaching, STEM education, we, we pride ourselves on being leaders <coughs> in STEM education, and increasing the digital capacity of our staff and students. Our project meets all of that. <coughs> in terms of impact, we originally looked at the Cool Bear framework, and this is what we submitted to go in there, but obviously following the, the submission deadline, um, the form shared with us the, the impact framework that they want to do, so we're not being fickle in, in, in swapping to it, but we think it's best to use what they uh, form supply, and we supplied it uh, in, in, in these four categories. So you will have noted from the onset in the very first slide, we have a website domain bot and we have a Twitter handle already uh, boxed off if we are successful in getting it. Uh, but we also have internal avenues to promote it, as well as external to all of our partners, teaching and learning committees, project groups, student focus groups, all sorts of different bits and pieces. And this ties very nicely into the dialogue and discourse. Again, if you look at our advisors, um, but, and, and our reviewers, our external examiner for this program is one of our advisors. So when they see the impact, hopefully, touch wood, when they see the impact that this program will do, they can influence the program going forward and hopefully influence their own programs internally within their own organization. <laughs> the teaching and learning practices, it goes without saying we're going to be changing those. And we're not going to, and what I would see from my experience, um, with, with similar programs, students won't want to go back. They don't want to go back to the old way. So inevitably, our teaching and learning uh, practices are impacted on. 
And um, as I say, when Teresa goes training for this module, she's going to take that into all the other programs she works with. And psychology is taught across the disciplines in DCU, and indeed it's taught across the, the, the entire sector. So because of the openness of this project, we're more than willing and hopefully will, will generate loads of partners to change teaching and learning practices throughout. The same principles apply for the staff uh, teams. I'll finish up now, because it's a very subtle sign. I'll finish up now by saying that the, the project involves developing staff. That's what it's about. Uh, uh, consequences will be enhancing one program, but I would see by developing staff through this project, we will be um, <coughs> improving all of our programs in sustainable and impactful way. Thank you very much.